Oh, there they are. There they are. There okay. Yeah, there they yep, are. I see them now. I'm going to try to bring up a map here, see how this goes. Can you see mm -hmm. the map? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Okay, so our, our topic for the work session is talk about a possibility or something that I would, I'm going to suggest that council investigate or explore, and I'll try to explain it as best I can. What we're looking at is the mill race, raceway, which is filled with water or it has water in it most of the year. It comes off of Spring Creek in Talleyrand Park. This is, and this is the gates are all, and the gates and the walkway and the mill race itself is all constructed you know, in time. Uh, it was originally constructed to serve the Gamble Mill, which I have another picture I'll bring up later. And uh, as you go through Talleyrand Park, it's bricked over. And then I, underneath West High Street, of course, there's a bridge that holds up the road. And then it goes, the water or the mill race goes under what is now My Buzz Cafe. The water daylights at the, the rear end of the cafe. It goes underneath this red building, which has a couple of small businesses in it, or maybe one small business. The water goes on down daylighted to the Gamble Mill. So uh, the purpose of the work session is to explore an idea. And that is in 2024, PennDOT is planning on rebuilding or rehabilitating this bridge that is over High Street or part of High Street. I, and they've been having through what's called PennDOT Connects, which is a, it's a very early, uh, I guess, uh, meeting with local officials or myself, just saying, <clears throat> for example, the, when the target roughly a year would be for the work, and what do we know about obstacles, detours, businesses that would be affected negatively? So, I, you know, this is actually the second meeting I've had with PennDOT regarding this bridge project. The last one was, I'm, gonna, I'm guessing it was in January or thereabouts. But anyway, uh, they, we went over this project again, scheduled tentatively for 2024. The funding comes through the Center County MPO, Metropolitan Planning Organization. So they have it on their schedule and they have an estimate of $1.4 million to do this work. And of course, you know, after the meeting, I started thinking, you know, if we were to fill in underneath this area, I don't think it would take a whole lot of money to do that and then rebuild the road or repave the road. You know, even if it was $300,000, which seems like a lot of money to me, uh, you'd have a million dollars left over. So the idea is, you know, moving the million dollars over to a very difficult and uh, much more, you know, much more dif uh, difficult and, and uh, intensely traveled intersection. And I'm speaking of Phoenix Avenue, Mill Street, of course, Water Street or Willowbank Street, over into that area, Stony Batter, and trying to make some improvements over there. And I, I haven't identified any improvements. All I know is, as, as some of you know, or most of you know, about two years ago, PennDOT did came in. Uh, well, a person from PennDOT and Tom Zilla from the Center Count Center Region Planning Office that works with the MPO uh, made it gave us a PowerPoint presentation on options to help fix the Phoenix Avenue Mill Street section intersections. 
and I don't know, we didn't didn't really uh, say exactly which one, but we there were some that we liked, and there's never been enough funding. There's no funding now. There's no funding to buy real estate. When Catherman's gas station over there went out of business, one of the first things I did was email Tom Zilla. This was probably five years ago, and he, you know, said, "Now's your now's a golden opportunity." And of course, he replied back, "Well, we don't have the money. It's not scheduled." Blah blah blah. So, a million dollars over there you could at least secure the property. You, you could do something, you know, to try to improve that area. But anyway, there there are numerous. Uh, obstacles, you know, that we would have to look at and, and address and search out and see if, it, if, like, for example, will PennDOT allow the funding to be moved? Will the EMPO allow the funding to be moved? Is, is If it's moved, what is eligible to be done with it, you know, and, and so on and so on. And all I am asking through this is, would you consider this concept, the concept of filling in under the road and like what, what, what we have to do is then moving the money. And of course, all that means the raceway would be dry after this. We would probably go back here and permanently close the waterway for the mill race so that water does not flow under here under here and so on all the way down so you know we would have to close this off just like we did down at the gamble mill let me show you that picture real quick so uh, th this is a you know a higher level view so i try to get you oriented this is the general store right here I, my buzz cafe daylighted water a small business building the daylighted raceway all the way down to, this is the Gamble Mill right here. This is the old waterworks building. And the water now flows down to the side of the building, the side of the Gamble Mill underneath this pavement. And over into this area, there's actually a drain. You, you can see the drain from the grass. And there's a little small, another small little bridge underneath Lamb Street. And then, it, then the water daylights again and goes all the way along. We call this the Krauss Park Peninsula because the raceway runs on this side of it. I had suggested, you know, a, a future project could be if this water wasn't there anymore, you could fill this in and double your size of Krauss Park you could, you know, make this, once it's filled in, you can make it a, a, its own trail, which we talked about a trail all the way down to Milesburg. Uh, similarly, you could take this raceway area once it's filled in and continue your trail path through the borough. You know, for those who want a trail, now of course we'll have a brick walkway, we'll have a road and so on, but Instead of walking on the road, you know, you could walk on a trail through here as a possibility. But these are all hypotheticals until we see if PennDOT will allow us to move the money and where would it go and all that. If they say no, or, you know, somewhere down the road, there's a red flag and they say, well, no, you know, your work even filling in is much more than I thought it was, then maybe it's not feasible to do all of this. But before I did step A, I wanted to talk to council and see if you would consider, you know, by motion in a regular meeting, can we explore this? Can we explore the possibility of making this a dry mill race and moving the funding over to a different project? Uh, so that was the topic, you know, we, we bumped this a couple of times or at least once, but I, I'm willing to try to answer questions, but there's a lot we, we probably cannot answer. 
because we haven't really gone to PennDOT, we haven't gone to the MPO officially uh, and said, you know, this is a definite thing that council would support if the funding was moved. Uh, Ralph, let me ask a question just to be clear. Sure. Uh, the 1.4 million estimate for the work on the uh, veterans bridge or under the veterans bridge, uh, that's, is that PennDOT money? Or is uh, that money that the borough would have to match or pay? It's it's PennDOT money, and it's not Veterans Bridge. It's it's its own mill race bridge. Well, it's it's there where Veterans Bridge is, but I'm just saying for clarity. But yeah, and I, I'm trying to clarify this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we don't want to talk about Veterans Bridge. But it, it's it seems to be a part of it. No, it, there's this is all pavement. Yeah. And right here, there's a small. Yeah, no, bridge. just right underneath there. Okay, I got you. Yes. Yeah, it's its own separate bridge right yes. here. All right. So, so yes, it's, it's all, it's all state, state funding. Yeah. Uh, there. Uh, we, we don't have, because, you know, West High Street is a state road. That's why it qualifies as for state funding or right. using right. state funding to fix it. Okay. So, and is then, there a. Go ahead. a I what I understood your question to be and tell me if I'm wrong is that a lot of it will be state funding but is there any borough money included in this project for that repair no there, there's no money for the repair as it stands now you know we like if we didn't say anything or do anything we would not spend a penny for this work now having said that if they say to move we let's pretend we go check all the channels and, and all that and they say yes you can move this money over to mill street or over yeah mill street and so on uh then we would have some labor you know closing off the the head of the raceway just like we did at the head of the gamble mill you know we would do that in house and uh, we would have some labor there. But as far as the bridge project, we have zero monies in it. And, and we, that, that's the way it's going to be. So uh, I'd like to ask a question financially rated. I have a couple others, but I'll do that and let some others ask and then come back to the others. Uh, if we were to do that currently under the brick walkway, that's open. Yes. If you're going to make it a dry thing, or would we be tearing up the brick walkway to fill that in so that you could then drive vehicles on top of it, which is a problem? And, and the question I would have, and I know you don't have the answer, is how much is that going to cost? Well, it could be it could be a future project. Uh, it could easily be a future project, Julian, where you know, that work is done. It doesn't have to be done at the same time the bridge is being done, whether we fill in or whatever. But I would say, you know, it could be done. You know, we could try to find a grant. Uh, but regardless, it's, it's something that could be done in-house, you know, maybe a section a year or something like that. I think the best case scenario would be to fill it in because you're, as you know, and people who have had events in the park, you you know, we we forbid people driving on that because it could fall in or break or, you know, need significant repairs, you, you know, that type of thing. I, I don't, I know it's old, I don't know how old it is, but uh, I think it would be best to fill in and replace the brick at some point in the future. You know, down on this end, uh, you could have, you could keep the gazebo or the uh, uh, pavilion. Yes, and or what's what we call this? The pergola. The pergola. Pergola. Thank you. <laughs> you know, th this could be a, a viewing area of the stream. There, there's a lot of things this could be turned into or re readapted or adapted to. You know, once uh, it, it's you know, so the water because water is still, still going to go here. Now, earlier discussions were, you know, the, the dam, the dam, again, doesn't have to be touched in relation to this project. 
Mm -hmm. Somewhere down the road, if there is a sleuth way or part of it's taken out or all of it's taken out, that that can be done as a totally separate project. Mm -hmm. I guess the real question, Ralph, is is will PennDOT allow you to move that money? I I don't I haven't asked because if council yeah. says no, there is no way, <clears throat> you know, then I'm not even going to ask. But if you say go check it out, Ralph, then I'll do that. Go check it out, Ralph. Okay. <laughs> we'll take Joanne, care of that Joanne, Joanne, the other thing that it would eliminate um by the train station, there's uh, two steps at the end of the the uh, brick sidewalk. It's mm -hmm. painted yellow. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've seen two people trip and fall there uh, during some events. That that cannot that step can't be removed at this point, and and that would go away eventually. Like Ralph said, if that is re-excavated someday. Um, mm -hmm. so I just just I just wanted to point that out to you that yeah. That, uh, that that would go away, and I, I right now I think it's a safety hazard. To tell you the truth, that's that's one of the reasons why we put if yeah that that yeah. angle that exactly that's why we've got that ramp or sidewalk there was yeah. to help mitigate that problem. Yes. And that was put in about two uh, years I, I ago. Guess, um, Earl, I, I go ahead, John. Okay, I didn't know I was coming. Or I didn't see my frame light up. Uh, Ralph, I guess I, relative to future potential, I sort of, I like the idea because, you know, what's now the stream, uh, the, uh, you know, that area underneath the old Boscano store to the Gamble Mill, um, we basically can fill that in and recover that in time along much as you're talking about down the Krause Park, it, it does present an opportunity some, for some additional space, be it parking, whatever. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I, it, 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 yes, at one time it was a sluice way, uh, but it's no longer feeding anything. Uh, I'm a little concerned that being that we're responsible for maintaining the gate at the entrance, do we also have liability to those businesses along the stream uh, such that, you know, if they have high water or something, do we become responsible for any flood damage they might incur? It's possible. I mean, just, you know, during the arts and crafts fair, you know, this was kind of a fluky thing, but there was a kayaker that got stuck in this area. You know, I mean, not to say, but yeah. there is liability with having this there. Uh, the only other uh, possibility that we you might run into and may want to think ahead is we're not going to have the uh, Save the Raceway uh, project. Our t shirts printed up, people parading around. <laughs> Save the race, I, I have spoken with, about this to a few residents, younger ones, mm -hmm. and the general consensus is they were not in favor of it. Um, I understand. I, I like the idea of expanding Krause Park, but I think you uh, have the opportunity to lose heritage. Um, I know that I give tours of the downtown when I do leadership, and it's always a point that um, when visitors come to town, they're like enthralled that this little creek runs through under these buildings. So my my um, opposition would be to lose some sense of a heritage that we have had with the Gamble Mill. Um, I understand all the points, the positive points, but that to me is a large distraction. The going filling back up on what Melissa said, I have three, three issues and questions. Uh, if we were to close it off, then you're not only going to have to talk to PennDOT, you're going to have to talk to the Fish and Boat Commission, because this is considered to be a wetlands. And uh, I believe that we can't eliminate wetlands without 
their permission. So that's something else that needs to be considered. Secondly, um, who would who owns this the raceway right now? Oh, <clears throat> Belfont Borough owns the raceway, and it, it's not designated as a wetland. It never has been. It's it was created as a mill race. And I, I would definitely check with Fish and Boat, but I don't think they have jurisdiction over it. They and the reason I, reason I say that is we have open gates and closed gates. We are not, we do not have to report to Fish and Boat well, or anything yeah, like I, that. I think it's a consideration. And then the third one is that we have been using the sluice way, and I don't know how this affected with whatever we do with the dam, is that when we've got flooding, we often have opened that up to reduce the flooding along Spring Creek. We would be losing that ability if we were to shut it off, correct? We, we have done that. We've done it when we were working at a project in the stream but keep in mind the water used to flow under the Gamble Mill. Now it's going to turn and not go under the Gamble yeah. Mill. You, you may have a engineering disaster if you try to open that up, open up the raceway to take Spring uh, Spring Creek water, <laughs> you know, down the raceway and make it a sharp turn and go under the road, make another sharp turn. Yeah. And go, you know, go daylight. Yeah. So just if, I think these are all, if we're going to go forward yeah. to consider this, I think these are all things to be con considered. Yeah. I do agree with what M Melissa said about the heritage issue. Sure. I, I know, I mean, obviously that's, uh, I know it's a tough issue. That's why I thought it's worth talking about before we went to step one to see what council thought about it. Joanne? Yep, go ahead, John. My only question or my only comment on the heritage issue is if you actually go back and look at the maps, the pre or the pre-Civil War maps, in some cases that 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 dam and that sluice way aren't even the sluice way might be shown. But this was by far the least significant dam works in Belfont. And you, by the fact that you lost the major uh, dam works, which would have been uh, Belfont Car Company, which would be up where the Sutton plan is, and the dam that crossed at Stony Batter, you're really just. You're, you're looking at the least significant of those dam works that were in Belfont. So I'm not sure historically you're putting a whole lot at risk by possibly filling in the least significant of those dam works. Any other real quick comments? Because we have two minutes. Yeah, I have a couple. Oh, saying, yeah, Go no ahead. Way. Uh, I'm just Dawn, on the line you showed is this so this goes down to High Street and takes a le goes left and then right again. Is that correct? Is that the turn you're talking about? Uh, let me bring up the other picture real quick. I'm the talking about going down here, and then you turn to the right and go under the road here. Actually, there. The no, 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 not that one on up, up, up by High Street. High Street. So yeah, you had, street. right. And you had the water coming down the, the brick walkway. Yeah. yeah. And then so it turns left there? No. Oh, no, it goes straight. straight, it goes straight, straight through. Here's the bridge right here. Randy. Okay, so it goes under that store. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, follow the line. Well, it goes under the store and then also what was the workshop behind it, Randy? I thought yeah. for some reason, I thought there was water left of the store or maybe it comes out from underneath then, the store uh, there a little bit. It's not left. It just goes underneath it. Yeah. There's part of the decking that uh, yeah. you can see that goes over the water with, right. over there on the left side of the uh, <clears throat> cafe bus. So, so my other comment is that I think you're right. Transferring the money is going to be uh, one of the bigger uh, yeah. roadblocks. And That's the key. Until we know that, I'm okay with getting 
a study done, whatever you want to call it, and look into it. And then we see where it goes. If it gets to where it's looking like things may, may be starting to happen, then we, we talk to the public. We have a public meeting about it. Okay. All right. I'll, I plan to bring it up under, I think, old business or thereabouts just to, you know, have the council consider it through a motion and then we'll, we'll be off whatever direction is approved. Probably too soon to think about it, but on the other side, think of some of the pluses that could happen. On Mill Street, a bike path that goes out to the Axman Brewery and the old Ciro building. Uh, we get a redefined Phoenix Avenue, Water Street intersection. Um, it, it's an entranceway to Belfont Borough. Now that we've accumulated or bought the subway building and with potential of what might happen there. Um, I understand all the heritage stuff and uh, it wouldn't be that if it would happen that uh, would go on mark or on recognized like we have other plaques throughout the borough uh, that would show where that raceway was at one time. That's just some of the comments I have. Okay, let's play ball. Okay. So uh, I, I put that at the bottom of the old business okay. after, and uh, and what I put down, if I'm wrong, I, tell me now, is would, would be decision would be a motion to review closing off of the millways. Final decision will only be made after a thorough review and public hearing. That sounds great. Okay. Okay, dokie. So it's seven thirty. Ready? Okay. Good evening, everybody. Uh, the March 1st Belfont Borough Council meeting is called to order. Prior to this meeting, we had an executive session dealing with both real estate and uh, per personnel issues. Um, and we just finished a work session on some the mill race bridge work on uh, High Street. Uh, call a uh, Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence, please. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America, America. And, and to the Republic, Republic which will be stands, one nation, one nation, one nation under, under God, God indivisible, with, with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for, for all. all. Wait, wait. Roll call, please. Mr. Eaton. Here. Ms. Humboski. Present. Mr. Johnson. Present. Mr. Prendergast, I don't believe is, is, is going to join us. He is excused. Ms. Fosti Vasey. I'm here. Ms. Walker. I'm here. Mr. Brackville. Here. Ms. Cleeton. Here. Ms. Thompson. Here. Mayor Wilson. Present. Thank you. Uh, first item on the agenda is approval of minutes. Do I have a motion and a second? So move, Brackville. <clears throat> Back in Eaton. Any changes? Hearing none. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? So moved. Okay, consent agenda, we don't have anything unless something came up at the last minute. Okay, uh, moving on then to oral comments. Uh, I understand Tom Songer Jr. or some other of his representatives wanted to speak. Are they here? Oh, he's there, I see him. Good evening, Joanne. I mean, Hi, okay, go ahead. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for having us. Uh, I promise we won't take too much of your time. Uh, the purpose of the meeting tonight, or the purpose of us being on the meeting tonight is, uh, I'm sure all of you are familiar with the SMS Sutton Complex. Uh, it was purchased at the end of last year, uh, November 25th of last year, by a local group 
that is hoping to redevelop that site. When I say redevelop, I don't mean anything drastic, it isn't a complete change of use, but they took over the property, which was really not being managed actively by the uh, group that uh, had owned the property. Uh, this group uh, was familiar with it and came in and uh, is planning to do a lot of upgrades to the property, try to uh, bring it back to some prominence, uh, again, service the tenants that are already there. There's about a third of the space that's already leased uh, to some tenants that have been there even long term. And the hope is that uh, uh, once, they, once we get the property formally marketed, uh, which we just began here about two to three weeks ago, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, attract some tenants down there. And the purpose of tonight is really just to get you to uh, get you an introduction to the four partners or the group that it has it and uh, let you know what some of their thoughts are. And tonight we have Scott Hildebrand, who is one of the four partners uh, in the project. And I'll just let Scott uh, jump in and uh, tell you a little bit about their group, uh, what their plans are, even though they're uh, a little bit gray at this point, uh, being that they haven't owned it that long, and uh, what we might do to answer any questions uh, that you might have. Go ahead, Scott. Thanks, Tommy. Everyone, thanks for uh, allowing us to be on here tonight. We appreciate it. Uh, I am one of the four owners. Um, we are all, we're a group of local guys, and, you know, we just thought it was an exciting opportunity to own a piece of property in a really unique spot. Uh, right on, right on the, the stream. Uh, and, you know, we were aware of all you guys are doing to revitalize the downtown area and the waterfront area. Um, and us being right on the beginning of that, you know, we see ourselves as being on the beginning of that waterfront area. And, uh, you know, we're excited to be there. It's a nice, it's a nice piece of property. We want to, uh, like Tommy said, you know, handle the tenants that are in there, but also add some, and then eventually work on, you know, getting that, getting that area fixed up down there. Uh, so again, you know, super excited to, to have that piece of property and be part of, you know, the, the revitalization that, that uh, you guys are working on. Did anybody uh, have any questions? I know it's been, a, most of you are familiar, it's been a long time as a, as a heavy industrial property. Uh, that market really isn't around a whole lot anymore. Is is I know you've kept an eye on the uh, uh, Titan Energy Park up the street, the old Ciro plant. Uh, we're hoping to do some of the same things. I think down on our and when I say we, I'm not a partner in the group, but nonetheless, I just wanted to uh, say that we've got some of the same types of ideas or, or big visions, hopefully going forward. Uh, Mr. Eaton, did you have a, a question? Well, I, I guess you answered it. It was. Uh, you, so you're basically going to try to convert it from a brown site to something more commercial? I'm not sure if, if that's a Tommy question or, or myself, but I think what we're really looking to do is, is get that anchor tenant or two in there to see how we, you know, shift the focus of the property because, you know, there's approximately 35% of the, the property rented right now uh, in a, a there's a few available spots in there that are quite large. Uh, and once we, we fill one or two of those spots, depending on how big that tenant is or how much they want to occupy, it's probably really going to have an effect on how we, we start to, to shift our focus on, on what, what direction that's going to go. I think, I think we just were, in, in my conversations with the partners and our brainstorming sessions that we've had, uh, we're just really trying to keep an open mind. We don't know who might uh, choose to be down in that property. Obviously, if another manufacturing firm, light manufacturing, heavy, whatever, would come in to uh, need that space, certainly we would consider that. But uh, as I've told them, and, and I still believe it's, it's probably unlikely, uh, light manufacturing, yes, there's actually a tenant in there right now that's doing some light manufacturing of, of wood furniture. Uh, things of that nature, but uh, we've actually been seeing some demand on the uh, uh, recreational side of things, sports, sporting events, and things like that. We've had several people who approach us that uh, that have some ideas for the use of that space and the need for the high ceilings, the need for the wide 
uh, column spacing and some things that, that, that are features that this building uh, or property, I should say, uh, has that not many, if any, other properties in Center County have. So, uh, so that's good. And, and we have meetings set up with uh, Fritz Smith uh, and some other folks around the area. The hope is that we'll get some idea of what where some demand is for different uses. And, uh, you know, no make no promises, certainly at this point, but certainly try to work with uh, those folks that might need the space and uh, even work with the borough here to if you have some ideas on on things you're looking to attract to the downtown area, how uh, how we might try to do that and, and provide that kind of space or use on this property, because there's a lot of space there, about 80,000 square feet, 70 to 80,000 square feet, plus a lot of outdoor property uh, that can be repurposed. I just want to say uh, I'm pretty excited about the possibilities of that property. I'm, I'm very familiar with it. Um, you know, Sutton Engineering built extrusion presses that went uh, all over the world. Uh, it was an international company, basically. Um, and uh, I don't know that uh, everybody on council is even familiar with that property or knows where it is. But um, the fact that it has possibility of uh, being re, um, I don't know, just the uh, new freshness to, to the property. Um, along the stream is exciting for uh, not only myself, but I think uh, a lot of the citizens of Belfont will, will like that as long as we, uh, you know, make it blend in with, uh, you know, the, the waterfront, you know, if we can get the longer that waterfront gets developed, the better, the more it's going to be used. So. Well, Tom, I, I, I echo what you're saying. I mean, Sutton did make some unique machinery, but actually going back before that time, it was actually the largest and most significant dam works in Belfont back when it was the Belfont Car Company. Uh, so, I mean, if we're going to have historical sites relative to, uh, you know, waterworks and such, uh, that facility should be where we would have the uh, memorial pa uh, plaques, uh, being that it is fairly significant in that regard. Very nice. Yeah, we're actually, uh, Mr. Eaton, we're trying to get a name for the complex, uh, bring some of that history back. We knew it was the Belfont Car Works at one point. We don't know if we want to use that exact name, uh, but that said, we're trying to look for names. So we might be in touch with uh, some folks at the Historical uh, Society and things like that that might help us uh, come up with a name uh, to rename the complex and, and give it a familiar name that people will would certainly know and and be able to uh, be attracted to. Yeah, yeah, I think to add to that, we're, we're looking for a name that's you know, it, that includes the history, but it's also inclusive for te a, a large tenant base. We don't want to, you know, select something that's going to um, get people to look the other way. We want we want we think we can do both. And mm -hmm. uh, you know we're excited that you guys are excited that that was the hope and uh, i'm really glad to hear that so curiosity question uh right now the entrance into that is on uh potter street mm -hmm. will i assume that will remain and so there will probably end up being more traffic down that way so as a, a borough representative from the west ward uh when you all are working on this i think maybe you should be looking at pot issues like we are having up down at where the armory is, where we having increased traffic, and we may end up having to look at additional safety and uh, lighting and maybe traffic issues down the road somewhere. Yeah, that's that's a good idea, and we certainly are aware of those issues. We we were talking about the entrance itself to dress up the entrance, but we also we'll be looking at ways for people to be able to walk to this facility versus have to drive uh the river is something we're going to have to to uh overcome if if we want to bring people directly from Talleyrand or down the park or <laughs> at least make potter uh potter street a little safer for people to to be able to walk and not or bike and not yeah. necessarily so that probably means a mini bridge over logan run to <laughs> uh uh 
our little our what were people have called the dog park then into Sutton. Right, right. Yeah, those are and and those are exactly the reasons why we want to just come on tonight, let you know what we've got going on here. We're really early in the game and and we're keeping a very open mind about all of this and and know it's certainly going to be a, a somewhat heavy lift uh just to bring the property up to current standards and, and make it safe and, and enjoyable for people that might be there or work there so um but we just want to let you know what we all planned uh if you have any ideas you certainly have my <clears throat> information and uh you'll hopefully be hearing from us in the future as we move along <clears throat> uh, with new tenants as well as maybe upgrades to the property sounds good I assume that will include environmental sustainability issues since we now have a, uh, we're moving in that direction here in town and around the country. Yep, yep, definitely. Um, that's gonna be one of the bigger challenges, but nonetheless, they've actually already had a contractor down there to look at lighting and some other things that they can do to upgrade the property, reduce its energy use and, uh, and make sure the property itself is environmentally sound. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for investing in our downtown. Yeah. Thank you. What was that? Thank you for investing in our downtown. Oh yeah, no problem. Yeah, we we really do think it's a great spot, and and we're all very excited. And it's only been a few months, but it's been a it's been a busy few months, and we we expect it to and look forward to it getting busier. Excellent. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Any thank other you questions for them? We'll look to talk to you soon. Take care. Okay. Thank yep. you. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> Are there any other oral comments? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to written communications. Ralph. I'll just mention, I think we have some guests that are here because of some written communications. So they, they may chime in here in a moment. Uh, the first item listed is a notice from the Belfont Area School District that they also changed the real estate tax collectors compensation rates. Uh, those new rates are, are given to us will be effective beginning of 2022. So you have those and of course I assume the school district posted them on their website or did whatever they wanted to do with them. The next item is in relation to the annual Easter egg hunt uh, there because of COVID and all that there, the organizers are requesting use of Governor's Park for a drive through event. And they're looking at Saturday, April 3rd, using basically the park to come in, uh, hand out the Easter eggs and then have a separate area for a prize collection. In addition to the request of using Governor's Park on Saturday, Saturday, April 3rd, they would like to hang a banner on the Veterans Bridge a few weeks in advance. Uh, okay. Um, what we would do is need a motion for a conditional date approval of the drive through Easter egg hunt at Governor's Park on Saturday, April 3rd, starting at 8. 11 a.m. The rest of the uh, planning, including the end time, needs to be sent to Parks and Recreation for review because that letter only said a start time. It had no end time on it. I'll make that motion, Brackbill. Okay. I'll second it, Clayton. Brackbill and Clayton. So what this does is just give it a, uh, a date saved. And, and then we'll put, do everything else and bring it back for final approval. All right. Um, and regarding the banner, uh, we'll we'll bring that back when we bring up the other thing back, so we can check to see availability for the bridge at the same time. So, okay. any Joanne, is this a nonprofit? I don't know. Yes. That's yeah, part of it's it's the same it's the same organization that's done the easter egg hunt for the last dozen years it's mary mcmurtry volunteers her time she's the lead on this and then some people from the moose club 
There's so a number, basically a moose club project. It's yeah, the moose, moose heads it up, but there's a number of nonprofits, I believe, that assist yeah. with that have gone together with this. So, yeah. so the, the there should be, probably be a waiver. We need to notify them to request the waiver since they're Bell Fund Borough nonprofit. A waiver for I, what? You know what? EEH, I see it must be Bell Fund Easter Egg Hunt. Mm -hmm. It has an HBI on the stationery. Yeah. The I HBI. couldn't figure out what nonprofit it really was. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. <laughs> Any other question? Yes. Uh, yeah. Since this is a drive through event, is traffic going to be an issue? I don't think so. Uh, you know, obviously, the, it is a very large event. Mm -hmm. uh, I would just say the, I think it was the Rotary did a drive through in front of Talleyrand Park for Halloween. And it's going to kind of be the same format. And of course, the park okay. is well off the road and there, there's a lot of space to go through the park and hopefully alleviate any traffic backing up out onto the main road but uh we're hoping that that'll that'll be okay there this is a governor's park right yeah. yes yes yeah they have they've had a couple of meetings on this and have it all figured out with traffic control and all that and uh the, the our police department will be involved if need be Okay. So this will be, so we need a, um, uh, any other discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none. So uh, all in favor of date approval for the drive through Easter egg hunt starting at on 11 a.m. on April 3rd, please say aye. 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 All opposed? So moved. Everything else will go to Parks and Rec and we'll bring it back for final uh, approval. Okay. Next item is uh, the, the chamber, I believe, or someone's asking the chamber. I think we have some guests here to talk about this. Uh, looking at doing a recycling, electronic recycling event and possibly using the armory property as a drop off location, if that's, hopefully that's correct. But I know we have Gary and, and possibly someone else. Is that, is that correct, Gary? Yeah, um, Missy Scott of uh, Black Hoof Technology, which was formerly Graybeard Technology and the Chamber are, are partnering in this. And it would be a free public service event. Uh, some years ago, the Chamber operated one and, and uh, there would be a professional electronics recycler, and they would take things like old towers, old laptops, keyboards, and, and peripheral, peripherals, uh, but not toasters and washing machines and things like that, and uh, they would safely recycle them. So it, it's a way for people to get rid of old electronics that they have. We're, we're also looking at, at some point in the future of maybe doing a shredding event, but since Kerry Benninghoff does that, that's, that's uh, less necessary. But we need a, a place where people can come in, unload. We're looking at doing this April 22nd and 23rd. So it'll be like afternoon on that Friday and then for a longer period on that Saturday. The, the hours aren't specifically gelled just yet, but uh, the Armory building would be ideal because it has those big doors at front and that big um, asphalt apron on each side where people can easily come in they're not out in traffic on the road anywhere, and they can offload their, their um, towers and computers and peripherals, and uh, they'll be placed in either on pallets for the towers or on uh, Gaylord boxes for the keyboards and that kind of thing. And then uh, they could be locked up in the armory overnight and they'd be out of the weather that way. And then after the event on Saturday, we would make an arrangement agreeable to the borough and uh, the recycle company to simply come in on Monday and pick everything up. So that's that's what we had in mind. It's not a fundraiser for the chamber. It's a free public service. And okay. I think Missy Scott was going to be on. I'm not sure if, if she made she's there. There, she's there. There, there we go. Missy, please speak up. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Missy Scott, the owner of uh, Black Hoof Technology in Belfont. Uh, Gary contacted me. How was it? A couple weeks ago, Gary, we started talking about this. Yeah, a couple weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he just asked me if I had, uh, if I knew of anyone that, you know, did 
electronics recycling on a large scale. There is a company based out of New Jersey called Upcycle that I have been dealing with for a couple years um, as we've been doing support out at CPI. And um, they've been doing pickups for me for a couple of years. They're based out of New Jersey. They serve all of Pennsylvania. And their rule is that as long as there are 20, they refer to them as CPUs, which would be towers, laptops, anything with a processor on the motherboard. As long as we have 20 of those, it's no charge. And they take, they provide the pallets, the Gaylords. Um, I have a pickup scheduled at CPI about a week prior to that. They're going to pick up the devices at CPI. They'll leave the pallets and the Gaylords with me then. Um, at that time, and then we would set up, and of course, as Gary mentioned, then Monday morning, they would uh, they would pick everything up on their next run. I have a quick question before I ask for a motion. Did you, you you're only have tentative dates at this point, is that correct? Uh, we, we can do it definitely, as long as we have a, a, a location nailed down. If, if uh, council is able to say yes to the use of the armory building tonight, then It'll be the 22nd and 23rd of okay. April. Okay, what, what we can do is do just like we did with the uh, previous one and do a conditional date approval and then have you go to building a property to, to figure out the logistics uh, and then we come back for the final approval. That's okay. Okay, and just make sure I know who to contact there so we can work things out with them. Yep, uh, Ralph or Don would set up uh, we'll would set up the meeting and send you the zoom link and we would work from there the, either that or if we could do like we did with the drive-in last year the pop-up drive-in and that could actually meet out there at the armory Definitely. okay well sure yeah we can you know we can work out logistics with uh you know whoever you say sure that'd be great so so i need a motion to uh to do a tentative uh, date approval of April 22nd and 23rd for an electronic recycling event by the Chamber and Graybeard Technology. I'll okay. have a motion. Okay, Eaton. I'll second it. Eaton and Walker. And then the rest of it will go to the <clears throat> uh, Building and Property Committee and then come back for final approval. Yes, Brandy. I uh, just had a question. <clears throat> We're talking about the armor. You're talking about the gray, yeah, the gray uh, center block building. Yeah, the one with the big doors on it out back of the historic building. Yep. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? So moved. So we'll set up the meeting and give Gary and Missy uh, links or to let you know if it's going to be in person. Uh, we'll, we'll figure that out later. Okay, great. Thank you very much. It's much appreciated. You're yes, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I bid everyone good evening. Thank you. Right. Have a good evening. There's two requests for Governor's Park gone. Do you want to touch on those real quick? Like, if you know, I have them with me. If you know, uh, well, I think I just remember. I ended up uh, there's a couple of uh, folks that have contacted the borough about the use of the Governor's Park baseball field. Uh, once again, it's a representative from the Pleasant Gap Peppers. They're a county league team. Um, they want to use the field, I believe, from May through August, and then. Uh, prior, before they submitted their request, we had a request from a uh, travel team. Uh, that's a bunch of uh, kids uh, comprised of Belfont Borough and the surrounding area. As I mentioned to somebody, a travel team, they just would use the field to practice. They pr probably play most of their games anywhere around the state and so forth. So uh, both uh, <clears throat> Both parties were made aware that the Belfont Area High School has priority uh, on the field from March through the end <coughs> of their season, including any potential PI play playoffs. Uh, but uh, all these folks kind of work together. So they, they all said they're willing to work with the school, work together 
on uh, use of the field and uh, split it up accordingly. So um, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Okay, we, we've got two different type groups. One of them wants to start this month and the other one wants to start May uh, 9th. Um, what I think we can do is go ahead and give a conditional approval for the dates for the Pleasant Gap peppers, uh, conditional upon uh, making sure that the school district isn't using them on, two, on Sundays at 6 p.m. and Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2 p.m. between May 9th and August 19th. Uh, with, and then once we finished with that motion, then uh, mm -hmm. Both these groups would be sent to the Parks and Rec uh, for review uh, for the COVID guidelines. Uh, neither one of them are Belfont nonprofits, so they will need to pay the reservation fees for each time they use the field. Uh, so I need a motion to conditional approval of the dates for Pleasant Gap peppers, noting that neither group uh, gets a waiver on the reg reservation fee and both of them need to go to uh, the committee for review. I'll make that motion for Bosky. I'll second it, Clayton. I'm Bosky and Clayton. Um, one question, I think if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe last year we just asked them to figure it out, right? Like we just said, you manage yourself on dates like they managed each other and then with the school. That's right. correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, Randy. Well, because right now that lease that we have with the school district the lease, then I think it's up to the school district to make that approval of these teams coming in during their, their the time that they're in charge of the field. Uh, because, you know, we put this off tonight and then it goes to, to Parks and Rec. Now we could be looking at a, another month maybe before anything gets approved for some of these guys who want to start in March. So my suggestion would be to um, vote no on this motion and pass on to those teams to go directly to the high school. We still uh, have to do the COVID. I went, I went back and looked at the lease. Uh, the, the lease uh, stated that the borough still has, we have control of the field. You have the, uh, you know, you have the, uh, uh, responsibility, if you if you will, to allow other teams to you know use it or not. The only thing our lease says what the school is that the school has priority, which means that either any one of these teams cannot use the field if the high school is using it for practice, games, or anything else. But if the high school isn't using it, these teams are allowed to use it with your permission. Um, can we amend the motion to say that they can begin as soon as they meet with Park and Rec so they don't have Park uh, Council doesn't need to approve it again? We can just say you, meet you, with Park and Rec and you're free. You can make that amendment. Um, is everyone cool with that? Does anyone I'll have second it or make it. <laughs> All right. I make the motion that these two teams are uh, eligible to begin practice as soon as they meet with Park and Rec. Well, well, the first one doesn't need until May 9th. This is only one of them, the uh, U.S. elite travel that needs the, the march. Okay, do you want me to restate? Yeah. I think you have to keep both in there. I don't know what it matters because they're still... Yeah, you know, it's just that the, the way she... The reason I said that is the way she stated it, it meant that the Peppers could immediately go and use the field instead of the May 9th date. Well, they would still need to manage themselves. Yeah. They would still need to like figure it out. Yeah. I guess the confusing part is we're, we're only talking about the peppers. We're not talking about the other team right now. So we, I mentioned both teams. Oh, in did, my yeah, I know you did. But that's yeah. wasn't what we're, so why don't we make this easy and do the peppers first, then we'll do which is the May 9th to August 19th. And then we'll go back and do the other just to be make it clean <laughs> so who, who's responsible for liability in this case 
with all these different plan organizations using the field. So if the school is running it from or leasing it from March until June, does that mean when the peppers and this uh, outside organization are using it, are we liable or is the school? We, we asked the event, you know, organizers or whatever to provide a certificate of liability listing the borough as an additional insured. We go through this every year, the same exercise. We don't have a point person for this facility. No. So not, yeah. this, the, uh, with all due respect, Melissa, you get three people trying to figure this out. Somebody's going to get angry and somebody's going to have to make a decision. You're going to have to have somebody that says, this is the way it is. Is that the school district or is that Belfont Borough? My view is it, it goes to the school, the school district has to let them know the dates they're using the field so that they know how to schedule around it. If they get into playoffs, that could affect something later, but it's still right. the school has the priority to of the time. Right until June. I, got, I can only reiterate in my discussions with these folks when I talk to them, they they're so understanding. They, they understand the school has priority. They really are saying, look, it, you know, we're, we're okay. We'll work around them. You know, <clears throat> they don't seem to really have to take any issues. So, I mean, in the past, they've always worked well together. It's one big family, you know, the local baseball scene, they're all, they're all connected somehow. They know each other. Uh, it's just never been an issue. Uh, and I, I feel like until it becomes one, you know, we could probably just continue doing it this way. And then if they're going to use it Sunday afternoons from 2 p.m. until 6 p.m., where does the public stand for use of the property? If somebody rents a pavilion out there and wants to use the field, they're out. Yeah. Who's out, the, the public or the ball team? Probably the public. Just the team, but unless, the, unless you have the public already on the field before the other guys show up, you know, then it's like first come, first serve. No, not if we reserve it for them at two no. o'clock. Well, we don't, that's how reserve, public, we don't reserve the field. That's how public reservations, that's how all the pavilions are. If someone rents a pavilion, it's out of commission. But not, but not every Sunday for the ball field. Not every Sunday for one specific group. I, I think maybe we can have that discussion in the parks and rec committee meeting rather than. Yeah, why don't you do that? I, I'm all for the for the baseball teams using it. I just want to make sure the public has used the facility too. That's yeah. all. Yeah, I, I see no reason with this motion that we can't include the second team as far as their dates go, because you're still going to have to do the COVID stuff okay. with, with parks and rec later for them, but you can get both teams times and, or, and dates on on the schedule at this point. Okay. I'm willing to do that. So I'll make that so amendment if that's if that Okay, works. so what we have is we have the <laughs> the original amendment was to do the uh the US elite travel starting sometime in March <clears throat> for them to give us the date. We don't have a date from them yet. And um, and they need to give us an end date. And we can conditionally approve that. The Pleasant Gap Peppers wants uh, Sundays from at 6 p.m. and Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2 p.m. between May 9th and August 19th. Both of them conditional on the Belfont Area School District agreeing. And then all other uh requirements will go through parks and rec for finalization for the COVID guidelines and that's my second part is what melissa added has an amendment so and i heard melissa make that amendment and brack bill uh seconded it so we need to vote on that amendment first and mm -hmm. then the whole thing okay does that make sense Okay, seeing any com uh, comments on uh, <clears throat> Melissa's amendment? <clears throat> seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, now we go to the whole motion. 
All in favor of these conditional dates with re referral to uh, Parks and Rec upon approval by uh, the school districts, please say aye. 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 All opposed? So moved. Okay, moving on. <laughs> All right. Uh, next one should be rather simple. It's just a newsletter from APPI that talks about some energy developments. Thought it was very good. It's very interesting. I was there for your review. I believe that's all we have under written communications. We have one more, and uh, Gina sent it out to you, me, oh, yeah. and, and Don this morning. Do you want to talk about the COVID guidelines? Me, me or Ralph? You, Gina. Me, okay, yeah. I just sent to Ralph and Donna and Joanne this morning. I'm sure many of you have seen, but Governor Wolf revised <clears throat> the COVID restrictions. Um, so just gonna give the brief outdoor events. Um, he's revised limits to allow for 20% of maximum occupancy, no matter the venue size. Um, Indoor events, it, the, re, the revision limits uh, allows for 15% of max occupancy, no matter the venue size. And then the other thing that was um, revised was the elimination of the out-of-state travel restrictions. So prior to this, those that are over the age of 11 who visited uh, from another state had to provide evidence of a negative COVID test um, or place themselves in a travel quarantine upon enter, entering Pennsylvania. So that was rescinded today. Um, but of course you can find more details about that revision on the governor.pa.gov website. And so. I pulled down these new, uh, uh, the new revisions uh, and sent them to Ralph and Don and asked them to be placed on our COVID-19 section of our website. Just to, for the public's uh, edification, the increases are, prior to this, it was 10% for indoor and 15% for outdoor. So they both have been bumped up by, by 5%. Any questions? Okay, moving on. Anybody else have any written <clears throat> communications? <clears throat> Seeing none, Tom, Mayor, you're on. All right, thank you very much. I don't have very much uh, this week. Uh, I do want to thank uh, Harry Brooks for calling up Mother Nature and getting all the ice off the uh, sidewalks. Thanks, <laughs> Harry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I also want to mention that um, that I would like the public to know, not that the uh, lot will watch, but I want to try to get the word out a little bit that uh, there is a, a uh, election coming up, uh, the primaries coming up uh, on uh, May uh, May the 18th. Is that correct? Yep, May the 18th. And there's five positions open in the borough. One of them is the mayor. I am not running for another term, so that's wide open. And uh, I don't know the status of everybody who's up for uh, re-election. If you're running or not running, uh, maybe you could let me know and uh, that would be great. So uh, I, I just wanna let people know that there is an election. There are five uh, wards open or three wards open and five positions in the borough. And if you're interested in becoming involved in local government, you need to get your petitions and get them signed by the 9th of this month. The other thing, if anybody noticed, I uh, was out walking today. We have two more historic uh, uh, markers down in the park. They look just like uh, uh, part of a train, actually. There's two train cars that are parked alongside the um, train station appropriately. They went off the tracks today and we'll be sitting down there for a while. So for those of you who um, you don't like the whistles blowing, you won't hear them for a while until they get these, tra these uh, two cars off the track. They're fully loaded with lime and uh, there's gonna be 
a big crane come in sometime probably this week, but the Belfont Railroad is shut down uh, until these two cars get moved. I have an update related to the train cars. Oh, good. Uh, I got word from our public works department late this afternoon that the crane is on its way mm -hmm. and they plan to set it up on Potter Street tomorrow morning. Oh, so, wow, that's fast. Yeah, so from High Street, I owe you a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> from High Street to South Thomas, Potter Street will be closed because there's going to be a crane sitting there. Uh, you know, I don't know exactly how many hours, but it's going to be closed tomorrow morning to pick up these train cars and get them back on the tracks. It appears that there's some damage to the walkway that you would use across from the parking lot over to the park. Uh, of course, we'll have to look into that and get it uh, corrected, but uh, I have an idea that the walkway crossing the tracks will, will be closed until the repairs are made. Mm -hmm. But that, that's the latest information we have. And, and the rails are bent and broken as well. So there's gonna be some work done down there. It'll take a little while, I think. But I am surprised to get the crane in that, that fast. Yes. There's money involved, so we gotta move. Yes. Um, I think that's really all I have. Um, if anybody has any questions, Sean's excused for tonight, but uh, if you have any questions for me, I'd be glad to answer them if I can. No, thanks for the good report, Ma Mayor. All right, thank you. Okay, um, next is my report. Um, and I just have one item. Um, in 2019, the borough was given a wayfinding grant that included an audit of our sign ordinance. Last summer, the ad hoc committee did an initial review and now the DBI design committee along with the consultant for the last part of the wayfinding grant is doing an in-depth review of the ordinance. Um, one of the biggest deficits that they've already pointed out is that we're missing a, a lot of definitions in that ordinance. Uh, we met two weeks ago and we'll be meeting again this week after the consultant reviews everyone's comments. So we may hopefully have a, re, a, a an extensive revision to the sign ordinance sometime in the next month or so. Any questions? Seeing none, moving on and uh, building a property. You're muted. I don't have anything. Okay, no report. Any questions, Fran? Seeing none. Uh, finance and government performance, Gina. We have, the only thing I have to report is that we have a committee, committee meeting um, scheduled for March 9th at 10 a.m. I can't remember if that's with the police department or not. I'm sorry. Is that, or are we, I know that we had moved things around. So I can't remember whether we were meeting with Sean then or um, whether that was April. We can follow up on that double yeah. check. Okay. But that is all I have. Any questions for Gina? Seeing none, uh, Melissa? You want to do park and rec? Yes, um, we had a meeting. The park and rec committee had a meeting on 223. We have several things to uh, approve. Um, we first met with the Belfont area middle school uh, to discuss their spring performance. In our last meeting, we approved the date, but um, in our meeting, we discussed COVID procedures. Um, if anyone has specific uh, questions about what you would want to know from that meeting, um, I can relay them. Otherwise, I would like to ask for a formal approval for the Belfont Area Middle School spring performance on May 15th and 16th. Okay. I'll so, yeah. second that. Oh. Okay. So oh, it's sorry, Hombosky, Hombosky and Thompson uh, motion to uh, allow the 
Belfont Middle School Drama Club uh, to do uh, their performances on May 15th and 16th with all of the approved COVID guidelines. Any discussion, questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? So moved. Um, second up was the CEF Center Region. They would like to hold their annual um, kids group uh, in the pavilions. They would like to uh, reserve two pavilions in a field August 2nd and 6th from 930 to 330. This was also approved at our previous meeting. Um, so I request approval of the event uh, with COVID guidelines for this group. I'll second Brackville. Kamboski and Brackville. Real quick question. Are these a, this is not a Belfont based nonprofit, is that correct? Uh, I do not believe so. So they will be paying the reservation fees. Uh, I can check, but I, I just know they're from the center region. I don't believe that they are Belfont based. Okay. So with, with that knowledge, I'm willing to vote yes knowing that they're paying the fees. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, so moved. We also uh, had a last minute addition. Um, Celesta Powell from the Center County Tasting Trail joined us to discuss their annual tasting trail event um, in Talleyrand Park Annex on June 20th. Um, I am not seeking approval at this time. She still needs to submit a formal request, um, but I'm hoping that this, when she does, it will not have to go back to Park and Rec. We've already discussed all the COVID precautions. However, um, we did a, uh, we do have an agreement that um, because of the changing nature of COVID guidelines at this point, we, she will not know what that final event looks like until closer to June. So when she submits approval, I will be asking for a event approval and then we will give final approval, uh, event date approval, and we will give final event approval in May when they have an idea of what sort of guidelines they will need under um, Governor Wolf. Okay. So that will be coming. Um, we also briefly talked about the Outdoor Adventure Expo, DBI's Outdoor Adventure Expo and the waterfront dinner and the likelihood of those happening and what guidelines and that will be a conversation for a couple months down the road. And we did talk briefly about the wedding that wishes wish to be held in the park um, during on May 22nd, we do not have, uh, after I talked with Joanne today, she has a few more concerns that were not addressed at that meeting and the um, bride to be was not at that meeting. So I think we need to have a little bit of a further discussion. So we need to have another meeting set up and ask the, uh, the young woman to, uh, attend this meeting so we can final, finalize the COVID guidelines. So if that could be set up, that would be helpful. Anything else? I have nothing further. Okay, any questions? A question on, John, the, on the agenda. Oh, I'm sorry, plus. Go ahead, about changing, Randy. changing about uh, changing a contractor at the park. I think that's a Don update. Is it? Okay. Yeah. I uh, just wanted to bring everyone up to speed. Um, uh, the contractor that we had uh, can no longer finish the job. So uh, we were able to go out and uh, uh, hire Meyer Construction. They're going to finish it out um, on the same timeline that we were on, which uh, is to have it completed by April 1st and uh, no changes in the um, in the funding amount or cost uh, between uh, the old contractor and the new. 
Don, do we need to uh, do any motion to since there's no changes or is it, we just find the way it is? That's fine. I just, this is more of a, you know, just for your information. So you know what's going on. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> uh, anything else for parks and rec? I have nothing further. Thank you. Okay. Seeing nothing, uh, nothing further. John, uh, human resources. Joanne, I'm actually going to hand it off to Ralph, being that there are three topics that Ralph is much more knowledgeable than I. Okay. I, I can quickly give some updates. The streets department vacancy, we did interviews. We actually made an offer today and I'm hearing that it was accepted. I, I don't have all the details as far as the person's uh, you know, name and background information, but that position seems to be filled and we're looking at you know getting a start date established. The assistant wastewater treatment plant superintendent vacancy. Yeah, those applications, the window to submit the applications to the borough is still open and will be open till March 12th. So if anybody is interested or would like to see the job description and the criteria, it's on our website. And finally, the part-time planning zoning hard position, I am ready to make an offer to a candidate and I will report back on how that goes. Any questions? Seeing none, we'll keep on moving. Uh, Randy, safety. Okay, uh, we have a committee meeting scheduled for March 9th from 7th Seven, or is it? I'm trying to look my dates here. Six thirty to seven thirty. That that evening, it's a Tuesday evening. Uh, I would like to request public comments or at least participation in that meeting. We're going to be talking about uh, crosswalk safety downtown, uh, and possible improvements that we can look at. And I think the help of the public would be uh, greatly appreciated uh, to have this discussion with. Uh, so again, uh, if we could get that link uh, on the website, since we have a week uh, to have that advertised, that'd be great. And then we'll just move on from there. Is that possible, Ralph? Yes, that should work out very well. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Any questions? I, I have one for Randy, uh, Joanne. I wanted to, hey, Randy, I wanted to ask you, we got an invoice today uh, from our consultant that's working on the FEMA uh, uh, fire grant that we have. Uh, you know, we've had uh, so many issues trying to work with FEMA in resolving, um, you know, changing um, uh, project officers and names and things like that and haven't even drawn down any of the, of, of the funds yet. I'm just wondering, I know that Nick is showing up at the fire executive meetings and uh, I was wondering how, if you feel like you, you're comfortable with how things are going, because I know we also haven't had a regular meeting, uh, you know, with him in some time. Right, well, a, a lot of the reasons you haven't seen a lot going on is just is still because of COVID. Uh, it's difficult for, for them to, you know, trying to recruit people at this time. And I know that they're looking now uh, at some mark marketing and things like that. Uh, trying to remember, I think it was January that Nick was at that meeting. Uh, originally we were holding meetings like once a month on a Friday. If you want to start that back up, I'm fine with that. I I'll participate uh, in those meetings if you want me to. Uh, but he seemed to be, when, last time we met with Nick, he was going to work more with Lori to get things going and as far as budgeting and things like that and how that's going to work. Uh, I don't know how much has, you know, has, how much of it, instead of any has been drawn out of that yet to pay for things. Uh, so, but other than that, I, I'm not hearing any complaints from the fire departments. He's, I think Nick's working with each, each station and uh you know work with them they 
last meeting he was at, uh, he was suggesting that they get a training set up. And I'm not sure where that's at because I'm not in that loop. Well, I, my only concern is, is until we get the first draw down, Randy, if once we do that, then I'll feel more comfortable. But I've been a little bit on a uh, little bit concerned about that for a while until we get that uh, actually moving. So that's why I just wanted to see how you felt because I know you've been dealing with uh, them more than I am. Yeah. Well, I'm involved with it, but I'm not dealing with it. I'm just, you know, <laughs> just another person in a chair uh, at that point. Uh, it's up to the fire department when the nurse schedules and when they're able to schedule some of these trainings that, that need to be done for their new members. And they do have a couple new members. Uh, so I'm just not sure how that's working out. So maybe go ahead and schedule a meeting with Nick. And uh, I don't, I don't want to be somebody just passing on information. I'd rather you talk to Nick and uh, see where he's at with, with some of the things uh, that I brought up here this evening. You okay with that, Tom? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, any other things for safety? Any questions? Seeing none, moving on. Doug, uh, water and sanitation. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, the first one is the Shiloh Road study, and uh, it's the first I've looked at the, the letter uh, for Act 537. It looks like to me, maybe Ralph can help me out on this, that this is something that might we'll consider at tomorrow night's uh, Tuesday meeting if we're going to develop a response to this letter. What's your thoughts? Uh, Give me some it, guidance. It, uh, it, it, we basically, the borough and the authority were copied in on the letter. So that, that's why I wanted to make sure each body received a copy. But the letter is, is pretty much directed from DEP to Venner Township, which is the you know, official applicant for the sewer line project. And anyway, make a long story short, they're saying you know, the project, the resubmission is administratively complete, but, but technically they're looking for a couple things and they identify what those things are in the letter. So it's there for your review. Uh, you know, and I, I assume the authority will look at it, but there's there's no there's no uh, reason for us to comment at this time. It's not really at some point we could comment, but it's not necessary. Okay, that answers that. Thanks, Ralph. No. Go ahead, Randy. Randy. Yeah, I, uh, the only thing I saw out of that letter was that that Benner needs to go back and answer yeah. uh, questions a little bit a little bit better than what, what's been answered so far. Yeah. I, I agree, Randy. That's why I'm sticking the, yeah. uh, the last paragraph. If you believe that the stated technical deficiency is not significant, well, blah, you can all read it. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know if the authority or the borough wanted to respond to it in any way or not. So um, uh, uh, Ralph's shaking his head no, so I'll have to agree with that at this point until I hear something that demonstrates that we do need to respond. Yeah, I think the last time we needed to respond was the last time this came through. And we just sent our comments that Randy and I put together the last time around. But if I don't like, I agree with you. I don't see anything that we need to do at this point. Okay, okay thank you. The other one is uh, we have a meeting for tomorrow night, 6 p.m., the authority. And then um, I guess I'm going to give this to Ralph also, consider the approval of resolution number 03011202 one uh, change to the bulk water agreement. And there's just a minor change that, um, if you don't mind, Ralph. Uh, yes. Uh, basically, our attorney got back to us and said Coca-Cola wanted one more change. And of course, the what we're doing, what council would do is approve a resolution and tomorrow night the authority will do the same, allowing myself and Joanne, our council president, to sign the agreement. But in the agreement, of course, we'll update the date of the agreement. And then in, in section one, 
I uh, just want to make sure I say the right thing. Section 1F, as in Frank, about, there's a, about a two thirds of a paragraph at the end that was added to that section. Those, that's the only two changes, the date and this extra language. And all it is is a clarification on what happens if there's a dispute between Milesburg and what will be Niagara and what we do with our billing, you know, the look back period, uh, those kinds of things. When do we go to arbitration? Which arbitration outfit that we use? It's just, you know, clarification in those areas. Uh, so that's the extent. And I talk, again, our attorney, just to keep it clean and have no issues, he wanted to see this reapproved in our minutes in case someone, case someone asked for a copy of our minutes, we, it would be in there. Uh, so we just decided it was easy as to put it back on the agenda and do that. Okay, so we're asking for a motion to approve resolution number 0301-2021-01, changing the water agreement from the Coca-Cola Company to the Niagara Bottling Company, updating the date of the agreement and adding the extra language in section 1F. Yes. I'll make the motion. I'll second Brackbill. Johnson and Brackbill. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. And then the last item, Dawn, I'm going to, I know we've chatted, Dawn, but uh, you want, you want to bring us up to speed on that? I, I, we're going to keep it as is uh, until we meet again with the uh, committee, but go ahead. You can take yeah. it from me. Uh, uh, okay, Doug, but just wanted to let everyone know, and I, Doug had seen us, the, uh, the new gate out at Musser Lane. This was the final phase to our 902 grant. Uh, that was completed a couple weeks ago. Um, number of us here at the borough had training on the back end of uh, how to program the uh, cards or uh, key punch if you were to get in that way. But uh, because of COVID, I think, you know, in discussions with Ralph and Doug, we kind of just decided that at this point, we're going to leave the gate open uh, and let it, everything run and operate the way it uh, operated last year until uh, until we get to a point where we're back and have the uh, borough open and same way with Spring Township and Benner Township, we'll distribute uh, cards to them in place of the keys that they had and then they can go back to operating the way, the way it was. We may decide though to leave the gate open during the time that we're not, that we're there Monday through Friday just so that the gate isn't, <clears throat> the gate and the motor, the chain, all the equipment, it isn't going back and forth a hundred times a day. So, uh, but that part we want to discuss a little bit further with uh, the committee. So uh, we suggested to Doug perhaps uh, later this spring, uh, getting a committee, getting the committee together just to come up with a policy on how that's going to, uh, how we're going to work that long-term. To, to, that, to add to that, we do have a good surveillance system in place at the Monster Lane Recycling Center. So um, we, we feel pretty confident that if there's violators that we'll be able to identify them pretty, pretty easily. So Doug, when are you thinking of wanting to, to do this uh, meeting? The, the, the committee meeting, the meeting? Yes. Yes. Um, I, I think uh, maybe April, May, Dawn, are you, uh, Join yeah, us. I'm, thinking, I'm thinking maybe later this month or sometime in April. The, Joanne, the, the system currently has worked very well. Uh, we, we, most people, well, everybody so far, I don't think we've had any violators that I'm aware of. Ralph and Dawn would know better than I am, but the honor system seems to be working well right now. That sounds good. Um, so uh, we're not in any hurry. Uh, to get this in place so we can take some time to make some some good yeah. decisions but i'm i'm fine so so if april. i were to direct ralph and don to do a doodle for april that would be fine with you uh, it's fine with me okay 
if, if Ralph, are you okay yes. with timing? Yes. Dawn, you're okay with that? Uh, yeah, that works. Okay. Okay, and um, I just wanted to also remind folks that uh, the fee for the grass and brush containers um, at the end of March, um, if you haven't paid the fee, we have folk, we, we are at our limit of the number of grass and brush containers that are uh, distributed throughout the borough. So right now there's a waiting list, as I understand it, of residents that would like to have one or two of those containers. So if you're, if you've had a notice that you uh, need to pay your fee for this uh, grass and brush season, that fee needs to be paid by March 30th of this year. Otherwise, uh, that that service will be taken away from your residents. Um, and that would, allow, once it's gone, then that can may be assigned to somebody else in the borough. We're short staffed, uh, what is it, Ralph, over 900 or something, 1,000? Over 800. 800. 800. Yeah. And uh, we have one person that, that does that collection service. So on the borough staff. Uh, so that's all we can tolerate at this time. So that's why we're putting the cutoff of the number of cans that we have right now. So just a reminder, to, if you received a notice, please get it sent in before by the end of March um, to, to have your service renewed. And anything to add to that, Ralph? Did I miss anything? Um, uh, good, good job. It's a $15 fee for each a brush can and a fifteen dollar fee for a grass can. That is correct. And that completes my report. Okay. Any questions for Doug? Seeing none, we'll move on to streets. Deb. Okay. At our the February eighteenth meeting, we had a presentation from T two Systems, which is a touchless pay option for patrons using both the on street parking meters and the parking lot kiosks. Uh, there is no app to download. It's much simpler than the, uh, the park mobile system that we were shown. Uh, T2 system is already used by the borough and expanding their service to include the parking meters and the kiosks would provide a more consolidated report for parking usage. Uh, one of the advantages for T2 is that the option to brand the signage that would be on the meters and the kiosks to include the wayfinding logo that we've currently incorporated into our letterhead and signage. And also the borough would be able to establish the user fee, if any, rather than having it preset by the way Park Mobile did. Uh, we've received a quote for service from T2 and we'll be reviewing that at the next committee meeting. Also, the committee did brainstorming regarding pedestrian safety and street lighting at the diamond. Uh, there are some enhancements that can be made to the existing light poles that would actually extend out over the crosswalk and provide more direct lighting that would improve visibility for drivers and, and pedestrians. Uh, we also discussed some of the timing for the traffic signals and pedestrian uh, walk signs at the signaled intersections in town. And what I'd like to uh, recommend is that the streets committee and the safety committee toss ideas back and forth, not meet as a group, but overlap ideas and then bring them to council in a work session to discuss what needs to be done to improve the safety in town. Um, and in your packet is a memorandum with Representative Karen Bobak's proposal for legislation clarifying PennDOT's responsibility for drainage facility on state highways. As it currently stands, boroughs are responsible for the subsurface drainage systems, even if it's under a state highway. And what this legislation would do is make it more PennDOT's responsibility rather than the boroughs because it's a financial strain for boroughs to maintain these systems. Uh, so what the committee is asking for is a letter to be sent to our state representatives in support of the new legislation. 
I'll, I'll make that motion, Brack Bill. I will second it. Brack Bill and Johnson. Discussion? I would just add, you know, this uh, obviously is a sore spot because in the, the, the townships, uh, PennDOT already takes care of the drainage underneath their roads. But for some reason, they, they claim it was some old decision in the 1940s that PennDOT has pushed the drainage systems of their roads to the boroughs. So uh, all we're asking for is evening of the playing field uh, like it should be. Now, also include that, uh, you know, a change like this could could be a benefit for the Parkview Heights area that from time to time gets flooded out uh, down by the ball field. So that's my main my main goal right now. And can we send letters to both uh, representatives Benninghoff and Senator Corman, or should we just start with uh, Mr. Benninghoff? It, it's good because they have to they have to agree on the language in each you know House or Senate, mm -hmm. but. Yes, I, I would recommend sending two letters. So do you okay. need to make an amendment or will you just automatically do that, Ralph? I can take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions or discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, so moved. And just a reminder that effective today, March 1st, uh, the red meters have been replaced with long-term parking permits. Uh, the enforcement will be from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. Monthly permits can be purchased online at the borough website and you can purchase multiple month permits directly through the borough. If you contact the borough and pay uh, with cash or a check They'll skip the 250 transaction fee for the monthly permits. I would just like to add for the public because we had a lot of people uh, today wanting to uh, purchase a permit and our website was down right. all day. I just checked it's back up and running, but just for people to know, the, the problem was is that the domain uh, balfont.net <clears throat> Uh, wasn't paid for, we were not getting the notices. It was going to our old internet uh, provider uh, or IT service uh, folks. No one ever responded. And so they just cut it off. And uh, uh, Alyssa spent a lot of time today tracking that down, working with both um, uh, Blink123 and uh, Link up in Altoona to try to coordinate and find out what the problem was as it turned out. Um, so bottom line is, is the website is back up and running, but it was, it was out today and no one could access it. It was a problem, but then we apologize for that. Okay. Uh, Don, I, Don I think we've had that problem last year too. Is there some way we can make sure this doesn't happen again? Well, uh, I will just say that we paid for, you know, we paid for two years of the domain and and uh, this time now we have the notifications are going to go to Alyssa and uh, William Offit, who works for Blink One Two Three. So Sounds between like the two plan. of them, as long as those one of those two are still in their positions two years from now, we should be okay. That sounds good. Thank you. It's a good plan. Okay, and that's all I have. Okay, I want to move go back to your idea of, of the work session. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what we'll do is have Randy and you and I uh, have an ongoing discussion when we're ready to have that work session. I'll get it put on the agenda. Okay, great. I think it's an important and we need as much input as possible. I agree. Okay. Any other questions for Deb? Seeing none. Energy and environment. Uh, Mike is not here this evening. Uh, there is an update uh, from the student group on the uh, dam that's in your packet. Not, it, 
they were supposed to meet last thir Thursday, and they and I sat in on them on a Zoom meeting that didn't happen, and they said that they weren't quite ready to do a presentation for us. So we'll just have to wait until the next one, which is a week and a half from now. Any questions? Seeing none, we'll move on to Office of Community Affairs. Ralph. Sure. Okay. The first one under uh, zoning and planning, we have no items for this evening for any action. And the HARB, we have a certificate of appropriateness uh, being recommended for a signage at 372 Phoenix Avenue with the Willow Bank Plaza. I have a motion to approve the sign at 322 Phoenix Avenue. I'll make the motion. I'll second it, Clayton. Johnson and Clayton. Uh, quick discussion. This sign, just FYI, is going is in similar in design uh, to the other signs at the Willowbank Plaza. The only difference being the words on the sign. So, any other questions? Seeing none. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. So moved. And the, the last item, my under nuisance code report, I have been reporting that we were looking for somebody, somebody, and I'm happy to report, as I did, I think, last meeting, that Harry Brooks was actually rehired. We used Harry five or six years ago in the, in the same position. Uh, he's a Belfont resident. We're happy to have him back. And I did invite him, and he's here to say hello and kind of introduce himself. So Harry, uh, can we see you? <laughs> yeah, could you turn your camera on if you have no, one? That way the public can see what you look like. <laughs> see you're coming. <laughs> hey, Harry works undercover, man. <laughs> <laughs> Don't show him your face, Harry. Forget about it. You there, yeah. Harry? Well, I can't really tell you why it's not working. <laughs> it's not have a camera. Like we'll, figure that, we'll figure that out for the next time. We've all, all right. been there, no problem. <laughs> uh, so anyway, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and anything, you know, to help get you started? Uh, well, I mean, just, uh, I mean, some people know. I mean, I know Doug. Uh, I know Tom a little bit. Uh, Ralph and, uh, uh, and Don, obviously, Don's a neighbor of mine, well, so is Doug. Um, but I am, uh, I'm a Belfont native. Um, grew up here, went to Belafonte High School. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I moved away for uh, probably 30 years, and I moved back maybe 16, 17 years ago um, and moved uh, back into my grandparents' house. Great. And, of course, we talked a little bit about some of the issues, you know, the, the more common ones, you know, the, so I'm thinking this time of the year, snow removal, but in the summer, it's, it's you know, the height of grass, garbage, weeds, yeah. weeds grass, garbage bins, garbage out all yeah, week. And, and, uh, <laughs> and vegetation overtaking, you know, uh, alleyways and sidewalks yeah. and right. et cetera, you know, all it's, uh, it's the, a different date, but it's the, the same thing. Yes. So. Uh, again, we're happy to have you on board. Look forward to working with you and sometime either in this virtual format or another format. We'll actually, you know, have you see what you look like or, you know, be able to talk to you a bit more. Well, we don't want to scare everybody away yet. <laughs> yeah, stay, in, stay under cover, Harry. That's my advice. <laughs> Welcome aboard, Harry. Good to, good to have you. Thanks, Doug. Yeah, welcome back. Yes. Glad to be back, Randy. We're, we're looking forward to your reports, and uh, I think this is going to work out quite well. Next. All right, that's all I have. Okay. Uh, special committee reports. Randy, do you want to do the fire exec meeting? 
No, not again. I reported on this at the last meeting, so I'm not sure why it's still in there. I did. The only thing I requested at the last meeting was if I could get this in Word so that oh. I could do the minutes properly uh, because this, those weren't final. I wasn't expecting them to be in that packet at that time. Okay. Uh, but yeah. I, I, when, we, when we met and worked on the agenda, I was thinking that that evening was your meeting, but it must have been the meeting the week before that. So sorry, Bill. That's all right. Is, is it possible to get that in Word, or do I just have to retype the whole thing? I thought I, I, I thought I forwarded it to you because I think it came in in Word, but I, I can, <laughs> we'll circle back and get that for you, Randy. Okay, I appreciate. It. I didn't remember seeing it. But okay. I'll, I can go back and look too. Remember Thanks. It. Yep. Well, in that case, we'll move on to both Ralph and Doug and the Center County Airport Authority meeting. You, you choose who's going time? to talk. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Ralph can fill in when I, since he's a newbie. Uh, uh, we did uh, welcome two new members, which was uh, Ralph Stewart and David Gray. Um, and uh, let's see. Of course, we went through the usual financial statement, the executor's uh, report, which is employments and board member contact sheet. Uh, we're and Ralph has graciously uh, volunteered to be on the facilities uh, committee, which I'm the chair of, and we're uh, in the process of approving plans for a new equip uh, six bay equipment storage shed uh, located off of uh, Fox Hill Road across the street from the airport where we park some uh, rental cars right now. Uh, so that's uh, with our architect. We had our a preliminary meeting it's gone back for some corrections. We'll probably meet next week or the or in 10 to 14 days and review that plan again before we present it to the board uh, for approval. We also met with uh, Mead Hunt uh, for the master plan of the airport. We're considering going over, uh, making some final adjustments to that. Uh, it, it hasn't been adjusted in many years. So uh, we're, we're considering that. Um, and then there was one special event. You can hold off for a second, Ralph, for your comments. Um, we, as the airport, uh, decided to uh, help a Girl Scout uh, who is trying to achieve the uh, Girl Scouts Gold Award. And if I may read this short paragraph, uh, I'd like to. Um, this uh, young woman's name is Morgan uh, Andala. Pandolfi, P-A-N-D-O-L-F-I. Uh, she's been a Girl Scout since kindergarten and now is a Girl Scout ambassador. She's working on earning the highest award for Girl Scouts. It's called the Gold Award. The project um, that she's developed aligns with her passion for music. She's been playing instruments since the age of four and she can attest to the benefits of that. In addition to developing specific music skills, studies have shown that playing music improves academic performance, develops creative problem solving skills, um, and improves reasoning, uh, improves memory, reduces stress and anxiety, reduces substance use, and enhances a child's sense of responsibility. Her project is to install an, an instrument uh, at the Burnell Road Park. And if you're not familiar where Burnell Road is, if you're traveling uh, west on Fox Hollow Road, if you're in front of the airport traveling west towards Toft Trees, uh, Burnell Road is off to the right. And there's a, a small park there in Patton Township where she's planning to put this device. Um, the, the instrument uh, is specially designed for outdoor public use, tuned to a scale, and has appropriate sound quality. This will allow children in our community the opportunity to gain benefits of music in a free, frequently accessible, and fun environment. The shape of this particular instrument also mimics uh, accessible and fun environment. Wait a minute. Uh, I misread that. It's in an accessible and fun environment. The shape of this instrument also mimics the wings of an airplane and will complement the airport design of the park. Um, in addition, 
there will be information signed and I will develop a website that will inform families of the benefit of music and provide instructions for the playing of the instrument. So the, the, she, in this development, uh, she's responsible for, for gaining uh, uh, support, location and funding to support this project. And she approached the airport authority uh, for a donation and we all agreed to do that. So we're very proud of her and the, and the, uh, the projects that she's taken on. on and I, I thought it was worthwhile mentioning uh, what the airport is, authority is doing for her and her project. And Ralph, you might want to add something to that. Uh, it's a good, good project, it's a community project, just like we look at. So, you know, the board looked at it very carefully and fairly, I believe, and, and tried to make sure they were okay with using their resources and the appropriate funds for this uh, expenditure. So uh, I think it's, it speaks volumes of the board looking at everything from A to Z, making sure they're okay to do this type of expenditure in the community. So that was good. Uh, Doug mentioned the master plan, and you may have heard me speak about master plans and my involvement. There's actually two master plans. There's one for the airport, that's the runways and the tower and all that. And then there's the one for the commercial terminal and so on. That's the one that Doug is speaking of that is, hasn't been updated until I believe 2005. And that uh, they're looking at updating and you know, looking at what funding is out there and what pretty large project may be in the future with expanding the terminal Okay. Uh, so th there's a lot of possibilities. We're we're very fortunate to be in a growing area. It's it's very exciting. Uh, there, there's a lot of activity there. Of course, you know, no one can really look at 2020, but we're all very optimistic that things are going to turn around soon and see uh, a lot of prosperity there. So I'm happy to be a part of it. I, I think that completes our report. Uh, okay, any questions? Seeing none. The one, one other thing, Joanne, is the MPO uh, minutes are in your packet. I, okay. I just received them and Ralph forward them to each member, I believe. Yes. Okay, thank you. Any other special committee reports? Seeing none, Ralph. Uh, I just I just noted here on the agenda that I'll have a written report, usually the second meeting of the month. That's when we typically receive written reports. Uh, so I just noted here for, for your information since we're still new at this and also just uh, uh, not change the agenda every time. So it's there for your review. And that's all I had this evening on that area. Okay. Then we'll move on to old business. Um, the first item is consider approval of the amendment uh, to the RV large vehicle ordinance. I need a, a motion to approve this amendment. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Clayton and Eaton. Discussion? I have I have one item. Okay. Uh, I'd like to amend this a little bit. Uh, starting down where it starts with property owners may replace. So I'm going to read this whole thing. The property owners may replace the exempt large vehicle or RV, provided the new footprint occupied is no longer than that of the original large vehicle or RV. And I'd like to add, unless setbacks support a larger size, because we're not, we don't know what size they have now. And if they want to buy something that will still fit the footprint or the, or the setback, but not this, it's a little bigger than what they have now. I don't want to confuse it that they think they can't buy something a little bigger. Well, I, I, I agree with you. Well, before we do that, we need a second to his motion. I'll second his motion. Okay. Brack, Bill, and Johnson. 
Okay, go ahead now. Yeah. Um, my, my question is, since this amendment to the ordinance specifically, uh, I want to say targets, focuses on property owners who've been notified that they are in violation of the ordinance, doesn't that already imply that the footprint they're occupying exceeds the, either extends into the, the right of way or exceeds the space that they are allotted. So changing, so in theory, they wouldn't get anything larger than they've got now. They could go smaller, but they couldn't go larger than the exempted footprint. And that's what the language in, in the uh, proposed wording is now provided that the new footprint occupied is no larger than that of the original exempt vehicle. Right, but we didn't say, I mean, when we talked about setbacks, we weren't clear on any any of the uh, distances. You know, somebody might be 15 feet, somebody might be seven feet, according to what I recall uh, during the conversation that we had on the setbacks. And I just, I don't want, uh, I just want to, want to try to make it as clear as it, as we can. Uh, maybe something changes uh, with me. You know, like we, I know we have an individual that might be able to lengthen where they park their vehicles right now. And so they would be able to buy a, a larger vehicle if that was the case. And, you know, and... Let, let me try to clarify, you know, what's, what was presented in the original ordinance the setback that was presented it was only the front yard or side yard when you were on a corner because if you're on a corner property you have two front yards so as long as you were at the front corner of your house and back towards it with a camper you were okay it's what i think what we found was and got uh, a lot of comments about were the people who were in the front yard, not on, not not out on the road, but in the front yard area, with an RV or a large vehicle. I think what Randy might be saying is if I have a twenty-four or a twenty-foot motorhome right now parked legally at the side of my house and I choose to go to a 24 foot and it's still within the guidelines of the ordinance I'm permitted to do that yeah uh, th this this amendment wouldn't change that okay well I I thought that was what Randy was driving at so Randy you have to tell me uh how I've phrased that wrong or well maybe I'm looking at it wrong because I wanted to make sure that you know like like I said if if nobody got out and measured anything and somebody's front end was out in front of their front yard, are we sure that they were not, you know, not in, uh, in the, what, the way the zoning says it's supposed to be? Could they have been pulled up a little farther that day that you guys did your, your tour or something like that? I don't, I don't know. Uh, I just thought it, uh, to have something in there about the setbacks supporting a larger size may help because we don't mention the zoning part of this uh other than chapter i guess it isn't is that is that part of chapter uh, 530 to section 41 that specifically addresses setbacks okay well then that's fine then so i think it's already in here Randy. yeah yep okay yeah, I, and now it's that's my that's not so, where my mind was. <laughs> so uh, since it appears to already be in there, what we have to do is vote down the amendment so we don't duplicate it and then vote the whole motion. Well, I'm okay to remove, my, to remove my amendment as Doug is. I am, yes. Okay. okay. It's not, not, not Robert's, but I, I'll allow it. <laughs> uh, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, John. Okay, uh, just a, a, a point of information, let's say. Uh, when we say footprint, 
is that the overall length of the vehicle and the overall width of the vehicle? Yes. Not yeah, that, fill base. Uh, and that may be where I was coming from as well. And maybe that's it's the base of the vehicle. It's not the height included. It's not the cubic. It's just the footprint. The footprint. Okay, Joanne. Uh, my question is if if the mobile home or the motor home becomes a trailer, becomes a fifth wheel. What is the equivalent length and width of each one of those? So that you can grandfather in. Uh, I'm not sure I'm understanding your question. When someone says a footprint, whether you're talking about a house or an RV, you're looking literally, if you were to dump it down onto the ground, uh, and there were no wheels, that outside edge, just like your foot, makes a footprint. So if, whether it's a fifth wheel or a mobile home or whatever, if it fits in within that area, it would be within this guideline, I, is the way I interpret it. Well, that, that's why I said the overall length and the overall width. That if that's what you mean by the footprint, that's fine. But you you have to make sure that that's somehow defined in the ordinance in case somebody comes back and says, well, I've got a wheelbase or my fifth wheel is my fifth wheel trailers somehow not equivalent to what my non my my just regular trailer or whatever a motor home would be. I, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting that you have, you clarify your intent there to make sure you don't get into a argument over details. So John, let me around. ask this question of you. Are you saying we need to go back into the definition section of the ordinance and define footprint and then come back and do this all over again? I, I'm, I'm suggesting you should define footprints so you have it clarified. Well, I, mean, I'm gonna, I think it is. I think that is defined in there. That's the footprint of their of the vehicle they have now. What they purchase later uh, is going to depend on whether it's a thirty by ten or twenty by whatever the width are of these things. Uh, that's the footprint. And so the fifth wheel fits in it fine. If it doesn't, then no. And you know those folks that are being, that are affected by this, who are getting the exemption, should already have the exemption at this point. Anybody after January first, uh, if they're purchasing or planning to purchase an RV, then they need to be familiar with their setbacks and what what's allowable according to zoning. John, I'm not sure what, what what is the confusion of a footprint. If you if you know the size of the motorhome, how do you get confused of the footprint? And if they're in within the guidelines of the setbacks, if if a if a motorhome or a fifth wheel, usually I'm not familiar with fifth wheels that extend beyond the the physical uh, trailer. That most of the time there's sleeping quarters above the fifth wheel uh, hookup or the fifth wheel. Um, and that would be included in the footprint. And so regardless of, of what the definition of footprint is, you have to meet the requirements of the setbacks of the physical being in the spot where it's placed. So if if you measure from the property line to the edge of whatever is there, there's a requirement there. So it, the footprint sort of matters, but it doesn't matter. It may be just as important that the setbacks are met with whatever the physical being is that's being stored. So footprint is just a convenient name for the area that the device may be occupying. 
Go right? ahead, Ralph. And try not to confuse things, but we, through the original ordinance, created a setback. There, that's the only time that a setback applies to an RV or camper. Otherwise, there is no such thing as a setback for a camper. On, you know, if you, you know, at, before this original ordinance was created a couple months ago, you could park right up to the edge of your property. You know, now there were some other setbacks in the front yard up a driveway. So be, beyond that, you could park it anywhere. And the only setbacks we created were in the front yard. And then if, again, if you're on the corner, the one, the side is also a front and there, so you get to the, the backyard, there is a setback. I believe it's 10 feet from the right of way into the property. And then after that, you can have whatever size RV you want that fits in your yard. Uh, same way with, you know, uh, a two houses in the middle of a block and a driveway that goes back in between them. Once you get back behind the front of the edge of the house on the corner, you could have a RV that goes all the way to the back property line. <laughs> That's not addressed in the ordinance. The only thing addressed is the front yard setback. We prohibit these large vehicles in the front yard. So does that answer your so question? Why don't we what are we grandfathering in then? We are grandfathering parking mainly parking spaces and somewhat RVs that were purchased or created Prior, I think it's January 1st. January 1st is correct. January 1st, 2021. And there, there's maybe 25 or so that you can actually see where the parking space is in the, someone's yard or on the side of their yard, uh, clearly for an RV or a large trailer or something that fit the definition of a large vehicle that's in the front yard and otherwise they shouldn't be there. Uh, so that's what's being grandfathered. Okay, so it's being grandfathered and as long as, I, I take it as long as what we're saying is as long as they don't move any further forward towards the street, they can be a, a no restriction on their length? No, the footprint is the restriction on their length and their width. Okay, but it has to be, they're allowed to occupy a space that comes out X distance in front of their, their property. Yeah, it's already there. Okay. And we're talking about spaces that are already existing. But we're saying the footprint of that vehicle that violates the the length and width, the overall length and width can't be any larger than what the previous vehicle was. Correct. That is correct. Okay. Yeah, I I I would have just used overall length and width. You can call it footprint, but I think someday you're going to have some guy come in and tell you about his wheelbase. And, you know, you you may have to deal with an argument with a guy saying he thought your footprint was still his wheelbase and you may have to deal with that. I think we used other criteria, you know, the year, make, and model of the of the large RV, whatever it is. Also, okay. in addition, so it's it should be fairly simple to tell if it's a new vehicle or a larger vehicle that shows up someday. Uh, are we okay? Can we vote? Yeah, we can vote. I'm. I'm Okay, 
Uh, is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor. Yes, I, Doc. I just want to say that the, the, the committee the, the really did work hard on trying to, to make this work for everybody. So they didn't go in this blindly. They, they really made an effort to uh, get this done. So thanks to Deb for her hard work on this one. I agree, Doug. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? So moved. The next is uh, the deck extension over the mill race at uh, Cafe Buzz. We're, we're just waiting for the return to agreement. Uh, the owners are looking it over. So as soon as we receive it, we'll update you on that. Okay, any questions? Okay, seeing none. Uh, next one is the prohibition of the banners on the waterfront walkway. Uh, after our last meeting, um, Don, Ralph, and I received an email uh, asking uh, what the reasoning was behind uh, our uh, prohibition um, on signage on the waterfront walkway. So. Uh, I felt that there was probably other people in the community that were also having uh, the same uh, question and Ralph agreed with me. So uh, what I wanted to do, we put it in the email correspondence that I had with the, uh, the constituent. And I just wanted to kind of summarize it for the people here who are listening here on uh, seeing that this evening so that they understand what was going on. Um, we have this policy in place because of a U.S. Supreme Court decision several years ago, which was related to the uh, First Amendments of the U.S. Constitution. If we allow any group to place advertising on the waterfront walkway, then we have no say about who later can put advertising there because by allowing some but not everyone to place advertising in that area, we will have created an, a, a, what's called an unconstitutional content-based regulation. And what the letter had asked is why can't we do this on a case-by-case -case basis? We have made a narrow policy for the Veterans Bridge that allows only Belfont-based nonprofits to place their banners on the two bridge railings on the, on, uh, the Veterans Bridge on a first come first serve basis. The two examples that were in this uh, Supreme Court and, and uh, case uh, had to do with two different cities dealing with the exact same type of signage. In the first case, the court allowed the sign owner to advertise on public buses because the city had had a practice and policy of allowing a broad range of commercial and non-commercial advertisements, as well as political messages by their initially not allowing the signage in this particular case, it became a violation of the First Amendment because this effectively became a content-based regulation. In the second case, an exact same type of sign, uh, the court ruled that the city could prohibit the signage because the city had specifically limited uh, advertising to commercial entities only. So this second example is similar to our nonprofit advertising policy. So I hope that helps the public understand why, why we told uh, the crews that we weren't placing signs on the waterfront area. Questions? Uh, that, that, uh, that email came to me as well. And I answered back. Um, as best I could. Actually, I sent him, or I saw what you sent, and I just said that that was part of it. Okay. Yes, yeah, for, from Phil. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Okay, then moving on, Ralph, do you want to do the uh, stamp documents? Yes, uh, basically, you know, we've been working on the strategic management plan. We sat in a meeting or work session with the consultant and uh, we're looking to receive some updated versions of, of the plan. They sent that out last week, uh, right 
directly to our council members and I believe we're ready to look at the next phase and we're looking to uh, schedule, of course I have a note here later on in new business about scheduling a meeting with the uh, consultant to look at the next phase. But I, I'm i looking, is, did everybody, if you didn't get a chance to look at the existing documents, uh, please do so. Let me know if they're uh, satisfactory. I know they had missed some comments so we're looking to see if you're satisfied with what you received and any feedback. And then of course, we're looking to schedule the consultant to come in and to another work session. Ralph, when do you want those comments from us back? Uh, I would say, you know, maybe by the end of the week or thereabouts, because I, I that'll give them time if there is any deficiencies, uh, they can address them and get them back to us. Okay. So this coming Friday. Okay. Friday close of business? Yes, that'll work. Okay. Now I do have one more item uh, whenever you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, okay, of course, in the work session this evening, we talked about the Mill Race Bridge, which is now part of West High Street, which is part of the PennDOT owned roadway. And as we discussed in the work session, they're looking at doing a fairly significant rehabilitation project related to that mill race bridge. And we're, we want to explore options for doing, doing a, an alternative plan there uh, may involve closing the waterway, the raceway to actual accepting of water uh, may involve moving the funds for the bridge over to the Phoenix Avenue, Mill Street, Stony Batter, Water Street area to make improvements there. Uh, so all, all we're looking for is approval to explore this concept with PennDOT, with the Center County MPO and see where it leads. And of course, we would report back uh, as we find any facts and details. Okay, so we need a motion to review the possible closing off of the mill race from uh, just past the pergola down to uh, the Gamble Mill. Uh, the decision will only be made after a thorough review and a public hearing. I'll make that motion. I will second that motion. Eaton and Johnson. Discussion? The only, other ahead, group I'd, the only other group I'd like to include uh, would be Nittany Valley Planning and uh, possibly Benner Township, if it, or uh, Spring Township, if it has any effect on them or if they would have input, especially if, uh, well, I don't know, maybe it's too early to have those stakeholders. What do you think, Ralph, on that? Probably till we see, you know, can we, can we move anything around or, or how that's going to work? But I do agree at some point, yes, very much yeah. so. Yeah, I, and I would add uh, the Fish and Boat Commission, like I, we discussed in the uh, work session. Yeah, Doug, I'm not sure how it would affect the whole Nittany Valley, but you know, maybe Spring and Better, yeah, is separate entities, but I don't know if we need the Nittany Valley. Yeah, the, you know, the only reason I'm suggesting that, Randy, is um, if we're going to be uh, negotiating with the MPO, I think Nittany Valley Planning needs to be on board and support what we're presenting to the MPO. Uh, as far as, as far as that goes, okay. Yeah. So um, not only what Belfon Borough wants to do, but because we're part of Nittany Valley Planning, if, if uh, they support what Belfon is doing, uh, with our representative on the MPO, I think I think it would be helpful. Yeah. Ralph, can I ask a question relative to this whole topic? Sure. The the people that currently own my or Buzz Cafe are they are they aware that possibly the found the front foundation of their building might be renovated by the uh, this 
PennDOT? I, I'm not sure that I, I did have a conversation because we were talking to the owners about, you know, adding on to the rear with the deck. Oh, okay. I, I did let them know that we were exploring the, or we were going to talk to council about exploring, you know, having the, the mill race dry. I don't know what inspections he did, you know, as far as the front of the building, but the reason, as I mentioned in the work session, the whole idea of PennDOT connects is for PennDOT to get ahead of, you know, how businesses would be impacted. And it could be all summer as they work on that bridge. Is there any way to keep the road open? And I, I actually asked that question because we've all seen bridges where, where half is done at a time. So traffic goes through there. Uh, you know, I, obviously we don't want to see the business shut down or go out because of the, the bridge project, but I gave them as much information as I could and that that is what they're supposed to do, try to figure out how to alleviate the negative aspects of a big construction project. Yeah, I mean, just just thinking about it, it was sort of like I never thought about a bridge that was halfway attached to a uh, a residential or a commercial uh, building, which that yeah. would be. Yeah, I mean, the, the walkway right out front, I assume, is connected. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. No, I, I, it'll be interesting. I, I, be interesting to see what the study results in. Yes. Any other questions, comments, discussion? All right. Seeing none. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? So moved. Thank you. Any other old business? That's all I have. Okay, we'll move on to new business. I had mentioned, you know, about scheduling the consultant to come back in in a work session to help look at the next chapter, next phase of the strategic management plan. Would this be a special work session or a regular one before a regular meeting? Yeah, if we have the time, you know, we could do a regular meeting. Uh, if we feel, I know in the budget season, we didn't have the time, so we created a special meeting. So uh, I'm open to either just you know, whatever council feels they, they need to do. What are I, the th I, thoughts of council? I, I would rather have a special meeting just based on our previous meetings and sure. uh, because we're not going to do this in an hour. No. Nope. And so I haven't looked at it yet, but so I do, I don't have, I don't, I don't know what to say about it. Okay. Uh, other comments? I'm right with Randy. That's why I asked the question. <laughs> we're, we're happy to set up this. You're right. I mean, uh, it is very difficult to go at any detail you know of a plan in an hour so again <laughs> <laughs> so i guess what we could do is uh once we get the comments to ralph we could look them over and then based on that try to figure out a, a good time to to advertise for a special uh, work session so we won't set it this evening if that's okay with everyone. No. No. I, I think they just requested sooner rather than later. And I, I, I agree with that. The sooner we get it done, the better. But. Yeah. But we should know more after Friday, Yeah. I think. That's, if everyone's agreeable to that, that's what we'll do. Okay, uh, any other new business? I have none this evening. Any other general comments? Motion to adjourn. So moved, Brack Bill. Brack Bill, and who's seconding it? Eaton. 
eaten okay uh seeing uh no opposition we are uh, adjourned at 9 33 p.m thanks everybody take care okay.